Hello and welcome to 5 Minute Physics. This video is about the motor effect and specifically about how we predict the size of the force on a wire in a magnetic field. If you haven't already watched our other video on the motor effect, I recommend you do that first to find out how to predict the direction. If you have already watched it, here's just a reminder of the information we covered in that video. This will give us the direction of the force, but to get the size of the force we're going to need an equation and it's one of the few equations that you are actually given in your GCSE paper. Here it is. The force on the wire equals the magnetic flux density, that's a measure of the field strength of the magnet, multiplied by the current through the wire, multiplied by the length of the wire. And we abbreviate that to F equals bill. The units are given there. It's quite important to make sure you use the correct units, otherwise you'll get an answer that doesn't make sense. The biggest one to watch out for here will be the length in meters. Often they'll give you a length in centimeters, so you will have to convert it. So let's look at how you're gonna use this equation. Sort of typical question here. Read it through really carefully. You never ever waste time by reading and double reading a question. A wire carries a current through a magnetic field with a flux density of 0 0.050 Tesla. That might sound really small, but actually magnetic fields when measured in Tesla are pretty small numbers. So don't be put off by that. The length of the wire in the field is 0 0.75 meters and it weighs 0 0.20 newtons. If the wire is supported stationary in midair by the force on it, how large is the current? So what this question is basically saying, if you can visualize it, is that the wire is being held upwards by the magnetic force on it. The magnetic force must therefore be equal to its weight, 0 0.20 newtons. Now obviously we're going to need this equation here for this, F equals bill. And what I would recommend you do is use a highlighter or just underline the key bits of information in the question. I've color coded this to make it stand out nice and simply. Once you've identified the key bits of information, I would write down the different quantities in the equation and the values for each one. And when we do that here, we can see that we are after current, but our equation at the moment isn't arranged correctly. So we're gonna to have to rearrange that equation first to make I, the current, the subject of the equation. If you're not completely happy with rearranging equations, I'd really recommend that you focus on that because it's an absolutely key skill. So talk to your teacher or find a video on how to do it. We'll be uploading one of those pretty shortly. So that's the arrangement we're after. F divided by B multiplied by L will give us the current force over flux density times length. If we take our values and we pop them into the equation, then we're gonna get a value for the current. Just a word of warning here. Some calculators will not give you the correct answer if you just pop those values in and press equals. It's important to know how yours works. You might find that you have to put the bottom line in brackets for this to work correctly. But have an experiment with your calculator, get to know it well before the exam. As you can see, when we put those numbers in, we get a current value of 5.33333 recurring amps. That's fine, but we also have to think about significant figures. Now, if you look at the information in the question, everything we've been given is to two significant figures. That means our answer really should be to two significant figures as well. So if we round it to two sig figs, we're gonna get 5.3 amps. That really is all there is to this. So to summarize, the size of the force on a current carrying wire can be calculated using F equals bill. Force equals flux density times current times length. And the direction, of course, is given by Fleming's left-hand rule. Thanks for watching this five minute physics video. Please subscribe or check out our other videos for GCSE Physics explained in simple five minute lessons. Bye for now.